Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Jason. And today we're going to tell you how we felt about the new Ninja Turtles uh, TV movie, uh, Blast from the Past. This is based on the Half Shell Heroes uh, action figure line, and this aired last year on Nickelodeon and was just released on video. Jason, uh, we didn't watch this when it came out. I didn't even know about it. I just saw this at the store yesterday. Mm -hmm. And we went ahead and sat and watched it. It's about 45 minutes long it, with commercials. It was an hour on television, and uh, it's kind. Of, it watches like a feature. It's kind of a movie, uh, and it's not set in the continuity. It, it, it acts like it's in the continuity of the current uh, 2012 car, uh, animated series. The of course the CG series, and as you can tell, it's in the, the, these uh, half shell heroes are in the same. Uh, style as that show. This, by the way, is just something that Jason happened to have already. It didn't come with one of these guys, uh, like some of the Lego movies that we've been getting. But uh, anyway, Jason, can you tell us a little bit about what happens yeah. in, in that movie? Go uh -huh. ahead. Um, so the so Donatello has a sh creates a ship, right? And he and he drives it. He it's it's a flying machine and he flies it but it goes to the past with dinosaurs in it and they they have these dinosaurs and this is Don Teller's dinosaur right here and he where it, he gets attacked by these um, these, um, evil dinosaurs. Yeah, the robots? Yeah, the robot dinosaurs. Mm hmm And, and so, and they, they have to try to find the crystal for, for the ship. To, to charge it, to power yeah. it? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's right. No, that's great, Jason. That's pretty much what it's about. And in the past, uh, the robots, dinosaurs, are created by the Triceratons. It turns out that there are uh, Triceratons, you know, the alien race from Ninja Turtles, in the past. And like I said, this is dealing with stuff that was apparently set up in the uh, current cartoon show. I've only watched about the first season and a half, so I haven't even gotten to Bebop and Rocksteady yet. So this was my first introduction to this version of Bebop and Rocksteady. But from what I've read, it's more based on that stuff than actually set in that continuity because there are apparently things in that show that should make it difficult for some of this stuff to even come together. But anyway, so it's it's in the style of that show, but it's also visually, you know, it's 2D animation, and it looks like kind of, it looks kind of like Flash animation, um, and it's in uh, it's in a 2D style, and it but of course it's based on that show. Jason, can you tell us how you felt? about Half Shell Heroes Blast from the Past. Go ahead. Okay. This made me feel like this was a Jurassic Park movie with Ninja Turtles in it. Yeah, and they even make references to Jurassic Park here and there, don't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they uh, make a big deal out of is that in Jurassic Park, we were led to believe that uh, the T-Rexes could, um, could only navigate by... Uh, by by a vibration that they didn't actually have good eyesight. And it's been since discovered, based on a lot of research on uh, birds that evolved from the T-Rex, that uh, it's very likely that they actually had eyesight that was even better than eagles. Yeah. And they mentioned that in this. So I thought it was funny that they went for uh, like scientific accuracy with some of the dinosaurs, but th w at least with with some of the factoids. But then, of course, the way they actually work in the thing is not very scientifically accurate. So, uh, did you like that about it? Did, did it felt like kind of a dress bark thing. Uh huh. But um, I don't know what di what flying dinosaur Raphael has. Yeah, that'd I be a pterodactyl, yeah. Well, but I thought it was a piranitor. Uh, it might have been Jason. I I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah, because you don't know that dinosaur. I don't. Well, you've studied dinosaurs recently. Yeah. And I've not looked into that, well, so I just and, assumed it was a pterodactyl. Well, and that I I know it. Be, I 
I, I only know that name because that kid in that TMBG G song. Oh. TMBG song? Yeah. Paleontologist? Uh huh. Mentions the. Oh, but is that a flying dinosaur? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um, isn't it the Triceratops that was that that, that it was uh, scientists recently decided was probably a uh, a baby dinosaur of an, of some other dinosaur, but then this has Triceratops, quite a few Triceratopses that are that seem like fully grown dinosaurs. So it's kind of funny how they're cherry picking things and like, well, we really want Triceratopses because we have uh, Rocksteady and we're making a big deal out of. Triceratops is looking kind of like, you know, rhinoceri. So, anyway. Yeah, but I I don't really know either. Yeah. So, anyway, I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, what was your favorite thing about it? Um, my favorite thing was... Was um, Donatello giving a T-Rex some pizza. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, we should do the signs. Well, go ahead. Okay, I am feeling it. Are you? Was there anything you didn't like about it? Um. I didn't like that it was um Leonardo's like like last bite of granola bar. <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. But you thought it was. But you thought it was a fun movie. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, this movie made me feel like, not to be a downer or anything, uh, but like I was watching the show I had worried the 2012 series would be. Um, this is, this this really is just kind of a silly cartoon romp thing. There's not a lot here for adults, certainly. And obviously it's aimed at little kids. But what I thought was strange about it is the, the writing in the dialogue and how the turtles interact with each other is similar to the way it is in the 2012 series. It's just, there's, it's not really about anything and there's not a lot to it. So it was kind of like, let's gut all of the, uh, the story, because there is some, some pretty good storytelling in that show. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's a pretty formulaic show, and there's usually kind of a moral lesson at the end, but this didn't even have that. I was a little bit surprised by that. Uh, this really was just, let's go to the past and fight some dinosaurs and fight some triceratons and then come back to the present, the end. Um, and there's kind of a twist at the end uh, where it's, it's not... Uh, they, they, it's 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 not all wrapped up in a bow at the end, uh, but that was another thing actually that I didn't really care for, not giving too much away. But uh, I thought it was odd that we get to the future, or we, we get you know, you know we come back to what we think is the present, and uh, suddenly the the premise that's established there in the last two minutes is in my mind uh, would have been a lot more fun to explore than what we did, which is just your typical let's go back to prehistory and run away from dinosaur story, which. Uh, the if memory serves, the '87 show did that too. Uh, they they did they did the go. Did you, have you ever seen that? Um, they did the go back in prehistory and get chased by dinosaurs episode two. If I if I'm remembering right, and uh, this seems just kind of like a retread of that. And like I said, it's 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 kind of fun. The action's good. I think uh, Ninja Turtles riding on dinosaurs is awesome. Uh, I thought that was a lot of fun. I, I I enjoyed a lot of uh, a lot of the silly cartoon stuff about it. And of course, like I said, it, it is a cartoon before it's a it's it's an animated drama. So that's fine. The problem is, uh, it's it, it was too, it, it had too much like. <laughs> Uh, modern slang and and stuff for my taste and Michelangelo was uh, is is far too incompetent. Like even more so than I think he is in that show. He's just such a liability. You'd think that that his brothers would just leave him home every time uh, because he keeps making things a lot more complicated. Uh, he belongs in Legends of Tomorrow. And um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It was it was fun. It's not memorable. Um, I like I, I kind of wish that it, just because it was it's aimed more at little kids or at least and see what's weird is it doesn't watch like it's aimed at little kids it watches like it's that same show except again just without very much you know actual storytelling and uh there's just not any meat to it and so uh like i said it's just it's just not all that memorable um i guess i'm gonna have to say not feeling it i i didn't i didn't love this um it was it was fun to see it once but um but i don't think i would recommend it to um 
I, I don't I don't think I'd recommend it to anybody uh, you know that's not a little kid. Uh, but but again, that's that's what I like about it because I don't understand this half shell hero line in the first place, Jason. Because Ninja Turtles is already a thing for kids and for little kids, and I think it does a pretty good job of being as for everybody as it can be. I think there's there's plenty there for adults to sink their teeth into. I think there's plenty... I think it's it's mostly aimed at a more, like, 9 to 12, 14, 13 kind of audience, but, uh, but I think there's it, it's perfectly appropriate for really little kids also. And uh, I, I'm not sure what the point is of, of giving the, like, little 5-year-old alternative... Uh, like with the Imagine X figures, and then to boot, we make a cartoon out of it. And so the cartoon, the, the, this this little movie, doesn't look to me like it's really for those supposed to be just for those kids over anybody else. It seems like it's just there to sell those action figures. Like it does it in that style, yeah. so that it can try to sell those action figures. But um, but I think it, it mostly would only appeal to kids of that age because of the fact there's not a lot to it. Um, like I said, the ending was kind of cool, but it's like, but it's really cliffhangery, and it would have been more fun for that to be the whole movie. And it I, it makes me wonder if they're going to do another movie, because as long as they, as they follow up dealing with what happens at the end, that could be really cool, but I just don't know if they're going to. So if this is all we get, I, I, don't, I, don't, love, I don't love that ending. Um, but it's... Um. Yeah. It. I don't know why there is um there is no Imagine Next movies. I, that would be really cool, wouldn't it? Right. I think I think though that Lego kind of has a monopoly on that right now. Because oh. like we would really get oversaturated with uh, movies aimed at little kids for the DC characters for for the DC superheroes. Yeah. If we had the Lego on and you know you know on top of Batman Unlimited is isn't an unlimited um, and and then also the Imagine X. But you're right. Like I was really surprised that they decided to make something in that style based on these toys and. I guess this criticism is more on the toy line than it is on this, but I thought it would have been cool if the toy line kind of went its own way and was even yet another interpretation uh, visually of the Ninja Turtles instead of doing like this this really little kidified version of a thing that's already for little kids. Um, I, I just thought it was weird that they did it in the style of the 2012 show instead of going its own way. Yeah, you know, like Lego Monopoly. Like Lego and Monopoly, what does that have to do with you it? Said, you said. Oh, 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 no! It has, a, a, it has a monopoly. Yes, <laughs> I'll have to. We'll have to talk later about what the word monopoly means. Because oh. yes, that's a board game, but it's but it, yeah, monopoly means that you that that you cornered the market on something. It means that you're 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 making the only version of a thing that there's not competition. Yes, that, I talk with my hands a lot. What else do you want to say about it, Jason? Um, well, I... Robo Raptors are cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, ninja, giant Ninja Turtle robot that can uh, that can turn into a flying ship thing is cool. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to show them my truck. Yeah, go ahead. So I have a Ninja Turtle car that shoots... Out the back? Yeah. Is that the shell razor? Uh-huh. <coughs> cool. Does it shoot manhole covers? Yeah, and then it comes with Leonardo. Yeah. So did you get excited that they made a movie based on that? Yeah. Did you have some of the toys? Uh, yeah. And um, those are of the scale of the Imagine X toys, so Jason plays with those with his Batmans and his uh, Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. I, I, only, I only have these two things. Yeah, well, maybe we'll get a, a, a few more of those down the road. Yeah. Um, that line is clearly alive and strong. Come on, come on, we can pick that up later. Well, everybody, uh, thanks always for watching. We sure appreciate it. And uh, that's how we felt about uh, Half Shell Heroes Blast from the Past. Uh, Jason flipped his sign green, really liked it. Um, I enjoyed things about it, but ultimately I, I don't think that, it, just for me, there'd be anything really to come back for. Uh, I, I also think that it's, you know, pretty inoffensive. I don't mean to say, that, I don't mean to imply that, like, you know, little kids really shouldn't watch it. Did I, did I flip this the wrong way? Um... Like, like, there's a little bit of potty humor here and there that I could have done without, but uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a throwaway good time, I think. Uh, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. We sure appreciate it. I'm Captain Logan, and I'm Jason.
and we'll see you again next time. Do 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 do